Tactics Volume 21. I am Type Zero. I do apologize for the delay between this one and Volume 20. Unfortunately, life likes getting into the way of things. What are you gonna do, huh? Getting us back into it was Arctic's new release, Unconceivable. It was a wicked track. This time around, we've got DJ Scruffy from all the way from the other side of the continent in LA joining us via Skype. I sat down with him earlier in the week. Find out a little bit more about him and the hard dance scene over in what has really become the home of hard style in North America, the Los Angeles. So I'd like to welcome MDJ Scruffy via Skype in the studio, all the way from LA. Scruffy, how's it going? What's up, party people? <laughs> uh, you know, like I said earlier, same shit, different pile. Yeah. So uh, even in Canada. Yeah, even in Canada, it doesn't. It, it's just, it's just colder. That's really all it is. Is it still snowing up there? Thankfully not. Actually, we're uh, 
we're we're actually above the freezing point and have been for probably a couple days now thank god nice. yeah it's probably spring <laughs> it, oh it's taking way too long to get there yeah it's 92 today in la so oh jealous got nothing to be complaining about so jealous <laughs> yeah i think we're i think we're going to be in the uh the high yeah. 70s tomorrow here oh that's nice though i like days like that that's uh first one of the year <laughs> yeah. i don't know if i can live there yeah yeah it's cold it's cold so uh tell us a little bit about yourself what uh what are your musical roots uh roots the roots the natty dread roots uh let's see so growing up with my mom uh she's always uh, she's been a pastor my entire life so a lot of church music growing up and then in the car uh, i always enjoyed singing along to like american pie and uh all the uh, classic rock yeah, yeah. So, and uh like the actual roots like down to it oh yeah um, absolutely well, like well, what's the first thing first things you you were really listening to as a as a child Elton John, uh, The Temptations, um, Neil Young, Rod Stewart. That was my first concert was Rod Stewart at the Hollywood Bowl. Nice. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So just a bunch of the classic rock, Fleetwood Mac. Uh, I guess I said Neil Young, so I guess I'll Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. Uh, yeah, just, you know, good old hick uh, whiskey drinking music. Oh, that's all right. That's all right. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with the classic rock stuff. I'm a, I myself, I'm a big Pink Floyd fan myself. So. Oh, definitely. Yeah. I didn't really start to appreciate them until I was like a late teenager, though. <laughs> so, uh, going from the kind of the that classic rock upbringing, what led you into the electronic genres? Um, my junior year of high school, I got a hold of uh, Hold Your Color, the album by Pendulum from uh, Australia. Mm -hmm. I guess now they're Knife Party. But uh, um, yeah, and I just sort of loved every track and the way it was floated out and the way that they were full songs and not really mixed down and edited to be an album. And uh, that like, just the energy and the new rhythms and the new sounds even just really took, uh, took control. Cool. After hearing a bunch of guitars for like seventeen years, <laughs> I, have to, I have to say it is kind of it's kind of rare to to hear a, about a, a hard dance guy's first introduction to the to the genres being drum and bass. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's kind of cool. You know, that's the beauty of LA. It's a giant melting pot, so you get a little bit of everything. It is what it is. Yep. <laughs> so, um, what was the first electronic event that you attended? What was it? Uh, what was it like to you? And why did you stick with the uh, this whole uh, quote unquote EDM thing? Um, the first event was Dreaming in Digital and this little abandoned theme park. And uh, to be quite honest, I was pretty bored most of the night. Um, oh, no. I was a pretty, yeah, I was a pretty sober guy back then. And, uh, you know, people were like performing hardcore live right in front of me. And, you know, I, I couldn't appreciate it because it was like literally my first event. And I was looking for the hard style, everyone. No one was playing it. But, um, I really enjoyed seeing uh, the different types of people in each room. Like in the trance room, you had, you know, professionals to so the partiers and drum and bass room. You had the junglists, and uh, in the hardcore room, you had all, like, all the candy ravers. And I uh, just dug the community and the vibes. And honestly, it was actually the the love I got that night from just random people that made me go back uh, more so than the music. Well, that's, uh, I mean, I think that is one of the highlight things about the the rave community is just that the. The, to and the together togetherness and just kind of how how the vibe just brings everybody in and everybody feels welcome into the into the community definitely most definitely something special that i don't really think you find elsewhere and i think it's sort of lost in today's edm you know commercial edm world uh, it's harder to find but it's uh, still there yeah that's the double-edged sword of uh, of something getting popular is you know you, you get a little bit of of both types of people you get the genuine people that are really actually didn't know about it and get into it because of of the expanded uh, popularity of it but on the flip side you also get the people that are just there because it's well it's now pop music yes sir and uh you know uh, we'll see what head says with heart cell <laughs> <laughs> well, well we'll save that until later yeah yeah Let's so what's uh <laughs> what's been your most outstanding electronic moment was it a like a show a festival that you went to was it a particular track that really um, caught your attention when you first started listening to this stuff like an artist yeah uh my first heart's like introduction to heart style really was uh this mixed album that my friend my good friend who even taught me how to dj and how to produce and we still produce together and stuff uh, he showed me this 
random mixtape from 2005 called like the masters of hard style volume (laughs) seven it was the second cd that he just found on like uh kazaa or something back in the day and uh and yeah i just like all the tracks are like expertly woven together and uh they really got my mind like you know you know I'm sure making one of these songs is really hard, but then going the extra mile and putting it together the way they should be put together was something that really caught my attention and it's something I sort of studied off that mixtape. And unfortunately, I've lost it in the past years, and I know, <laughs> I've, been, I know I've been looking to find it, and I, I just can't find it anywhere. But uh, uh, personally, uh, it's been my goal to try and like recreate the feeling I re- I felt uh, listening to that the first few times. I know That's, that sounds pretty cool. So with that, uh, we're going to jump into the Type Zero Mix for uh, episode 21, and uh, we'll be back with uh, Scruffy in uh, about half an hour. So uh, we'll see you guys all on the other side.
past has collected and I have rejected everything I sit on my throne oh, oh bitter to my tongue rough on my heart all I want is to be alone all my lies said and done I ask myself
because we're imagining the omniverse, what we're thinking about is the timeless place where our universe and all the possible parallel universes resulting from chance and choice and all the other possible universes all unfold together into a beautifully balanced zero which is not empty but full of all the other possibilities.
Friday from 8 p.m. until 10 p.m. Check out Raw Tactics. If you're one of those people that just has to live at 150 BPM, featuring the best in hard style and raw style, hosted by myself, Type Zero, and featuring a guest mix from a new artist every single episode. Hi, everyone. This is Frontliner, and you're listening to Raw Tactics at Overdrive Canada. And we're back with Scruffy. Uh... This is where we get to poke at him a little bit more and see what he's all about in terms of this uh, this whole hard style thing. <laughs> so, uh, when did you when did you when did you get into hard style? I mean, and why'd you stick with it? Uh, it's probably gonna bleed into the other answer I said, but uh, 2006 again, my friend Danny showed me that CD, and then uh, he got a little workstation uh, a couple years later, sort of the year after, and a little Gemini, two CDJ, you know, two CD players and a crossfader and a couple EQs. And he uh, started a mix on it, and that really inspired me. So I got Virtual DJ uh, when I got my new computer that December, I think that was 2008, excuse me. And uh, pretty much started mixing horribly. (laughs) Uh, I I think we all did. Yeah, you know, I, I wanted to create the moment rather than earn the moment and uh, learning how to play out tracks and play tracks together and knowing when to switch that came in time. But uh, I've never not had fun mixing and I really mixed almost every day from then on out. And, uh, you know, eventually evolved from virtual DJ just to regular CDJs and uh, started gigging in uh, uh, January 2010. So Cool. Yeah. Uh, is there a particular artist or track that to this day still still to you is like the the, the best example of uh, of hard style? Uh, for pure energy, my personal favorite is the Raiders speaker leader speaker mix, and it's off that that early mixtape, and it's just the build up in it is so insane. And <laughs> it, it, it's really raw and primitive because it was like two thousand five, two thousand six when they made that song, so the sounds weren't that exact or that you know polished as they are now um but as far as like all-time artists it'd probably have to be techno boy dj isaac they've just they've been doing the game from day one and they're still doing it now and they're still really relative and pushing boundaries so uh, speaking, this, speaking this, of isaac uh i'm just gonna take a moment to, i know he's uh he's recovering from surgery so uh yes, just want to wish him a speedy recovery thoughts and prayers so this is a this is a question i don't really prep any of the guys for but i ask it anyways it's, it's uh, i think i know it's coming <laughs> single-handedly right. what's the uh, what's the most embarrassing thing that's ever happened to you at a at a show this past saturday night <laughs> oh no <laughs> yeah it was just one of those things where i tried the person playing before me was playing happy hardcore so i tried to open up with like you know a hardcore like i think it was art of fighters and just trying to do something different and um and I don't know, from like the, the word go, I just, stuff just wasn't hitting. It was just one of those days, you know, where like not even Michael Jordan could like make a basketball in a, oh, no. you know, like in a giant hoop. You know what I mean? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, it's, it we've was all just, had those days. Yeah, and I felt horrible like going up. To, the promoter had paid me before I played, so I was just like, ugh, just biting nails, uh, getting off stage. And, um, you know, I'm still not really recovering from it, like, you're on four days after, but I've, like, offered the promoter half half price for the next gig. That's how bad I felt. And, oh, you know, no. it wasn't really that bad, but to me, it was like, ugh, this isn't, like, the product I wish to deliver, you know, so. I get you. Yeah. So we uh, we touched on this a little bit earlier in the uh, in the interview, but uh, with the growing popularity of uh, of hard style in the genre, uh, is this something that you're concerned about? Are you happy about it? Uh, the way that everything is is moving in the the hard dance scene. Uh, you know, it's it's something I think I've known was always coming. Um, but recently, like we've had two Q dance events in the past six months out here in Los Angeles, 
And I haven't gone to either one of them because I'm sort of on silent protest. But, uh, you know, it's sort of starting to create that little, uh, that sort of, I don't know, that cross-section you're talking about of people sort of flocking to something because it's starting to get popular. And uh, the way dubstep exploded in the U.S., like, I fear hard style, so going through that route. And uh, so the cynic in me is saying, this is really bad. We should keep it underground, keep it minimal, you know, let it evolve naturally, don't have cute ants throwing events every six months. But on the other side, I realize that the energy and the introspection and the healing that this music can do is going to touch people on such a deeper level, whether if they're just going because their friend asked them to come one night or whatever. If you allow yourself to be in the moment, the moment's going to, you know, it's going to help you ultimately. And, you know, whether you're just there to boogie or you're there to have the time of your life, uh, I don't think it's such a bad thing. <laughs> cool. Yeah. I know, uh, I know uh, Headhunters and Audio Free got a lot of uh, a lot of flack for the l- last track they put out together, Breakout. Yeah, I don't I don't get that. I'm like I purposely uh, started half my mix. My uh, I put out a monthly mix on my SoundCloud. Uh, I'm going up to like 23 hours now. But um, and I started with like a couple like acty subground tracks because to me that's hard style too. You know, it's, it's a little bit harder than what's played at clubs and it's you know on the main stage, but uh, it still has that cool vibe to it. And uh, you know, I played uh, Breakout and um, I don't know. To me, it's all hard style. And if you say it's not hard style, then you're, like, you're some sort of bigot. <laughs> I'm just joking, but uh, yeah, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. Mm-hmm. So what uh, what defines you as an artist? What sound are you going for? What are you trying to What are you trying to tell people? Uh, you know, uh, mm-hmm. as for production wise, uh, you know, I've been fooling around with a couple of my stuff. I played a couple of my songs and a couple of my sets before, but I've never posted anything. And because you know, it's really hard to like have a definitive sound in hard style because it's so technical. I think a lot of people get easily wrapped up in sort of imitating rather than innovating mm-hmm. and uh, so personally like I'm I'm holding those projects close to my chest and you know when the time's ready I'll, I'll reveal them <laughs> but as, as far as a DJ goes which I think ultimately what this is all about is that live show that live presence the live the live feeling um, I like evolving the beat uh, you know, keeping it simple in the beginning, getting raw at the end, or just, you know, at the same time sort of having this, the flow where, you know, I'm sort of expecting something to happen here, but I didn't know it was going to be that. I like keeping audiences on their toes, uh, like sort of, uh, you know, uh, being like blah, 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 sort of appearing as if I'm laying the track 10 feet ahead of the train. And uh, ultimately, so to me that I feel like creates like the most exciting environment to dance in, to uh to learn in, to love in. It's it's great, you know. Cool. Mm-hmm. Well with that we're gonna we're gonna check out your mix and cool. uh we'll check back with you uh when uh, when that all that's wrapped up and uh we'll say our goodbye. So uh with that enjoy Scruffy's mix and uh we'll be back on the other side. Get up and dance. Give me something to dance to.
the evolutionary process never sleeps Innovating DJs and producers evolving beats From the curbs and corners of Italian streets Techno boy brought us Hard style now tempo, call it lento Never mind suckers saying he gon' mentor I'm loving the new shit, I'm playing the new hits We all know the future is made up of new kids Love it or hate it, but this is created For hard style that never become outdated Hard style new flash, we make cool trash Fuck up the bass and make the beat smash Style evolves until it has reached the point of perfection. Then it evolves no more and faces possible extinction. Unless its genes are passed on to the offspring. Once accepted by the collective, we are on the verge of a new era. The question is, have we already reached the motherfucking point of perfection?
on your own got me ten feet off the ground And I'm hearing what you say but I just can't make a sound You tell me that you need me, then you go and cut me down You tell me that you're sorry, didn't think I'd turn around And say that it's too late to apologize Thank uh, DJ Scruffy for uh, providing us with this awesome mix. Scruffy, where can people check you out? Yeah, Facebook.com slash DJ Scruffy. That's S K R U F F E H. That's my Facebook page. And SoundCloud.com slash Scruffy. That's again S K R U F F E H. And um, yeah, I have a bunch of hard style for free downloads. Again, like almost 23 hours on my SoundCloud. So come check it out. Come vibe out with me. Right on. Well, I want to I want to take a minute and thank you for uh, for sitting down with me tonight and doing this interview and providing the the mix for us. It's been a pleasure having you. Thank you for having me, man. Thank you for being so professional and so set up. And uh, yeah, definitely. I uh, can't wait to show this to a uh, little following I got out here. Awesome. Well, hopefully we'll have you back on at uh, at a later date, and uh, we'll see what what has changed since uh, since now and then. Sounds good. Can I uh, play a couple gigs real quick? Sure. I think I forgot to. For sure. Uh, July 12th, I'm playing in Fresno uh, and in EDC weekend. Blah, 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 blah. EDC weekend in June. I'm playing Vegas twice. Uh, one poolside, I think, at the Alexis Park Hotel. And another one is sort of an underground day party. Uh, both, all the information is on my Facebook page, which is again facebook.com slash DJ Scuffy. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Not a problem. Thank you. Thank so, you. Uh, I guess uh, that wraps it up for episode 21, and uh, 